Hello and welcome to this Slim DevOps episode 21. I'm beginning to lose count. Um, <laughs> uh, this was originally recorded live on twitch.tv slash Slim DevOps on the 15th of October. If you're watching this after the fact on YouTube, then do consider coming over to Twitch and giving us a follow and you can join in interactively. Uh, today I'm joined by my colleague Josh. Hello Josh, how are you doing? What's up, Martin? Uh, was it? What do you say? Um, long time viewer, first time streamer. <laughs> um, well, it's good to have you here. So, could you just uh, introduce yourself? Sure thing. So, um, I'm the product guy at, at Slim uh, right now. I've been at Slim for uh, since pretty, pretty early on, about a year ago. I started and uh, really, really, um, you know, kind of focused on trying to create the best developer experience we possibly can. Uh, with our product so that's my that's my thing so yes you are the product manager right yeah so um prior to slim you know uh what other stuff have you worked on sure thing so uh background um most recently i think uh the most interesting part would be about five years at DigitalOcean, uh basically running a, a couple product teams including uh the a lot of the developer experience portion of, of DigitalOcean, uh, the web experience, API, CLI, uh, and a few other really cool areas. So um, that was really fun. Um, got to talk to uh, thousands of developers over that period of time, and uh, I bet you did. Really, yeah, and uh, really kind of uh, catalyzed uh, for me the the uh, the kind of need to to help developers and, and create better developer experiences because. Their folks uh, face a lot of challenges in their day to day, and I, I think that um, a lot of them are unnecessary. Or hopefully, right. if we do it right, they're unnecessary. Okay, so um, now it's convenient you're here because we're going to be talking about sort of the road ahead with the uh, Slim Developer Platform. But I thought a more interesting question to start with is: you say you're one of the sort of the uh, early uh, sort of hires for Slim. So yeah. what did the original sort of project uh, product roadmap look like when you first got started? That's a great question. I, you know, it's funny because uh, I went back uh, in prepping for this. I went back to go take a look to see, um, you know, some of the idea, look at some of the ideas that we had early on and, and some of the stuff we were talking about and see how that compared to what we're working on uh, today and what we're looking forward uh, to in the future. So, uh, you know what? Um, Honestly, there's there's not a huge difference uh, in terms of the mission uh, that we were on uh, early. So the I think the main uh, the main stuff we've been working on, as you've seen, kind of in the in the limited release uh, of the platform, uh, really around container discovery. Well, one of the main things that we focused on early on, which is you know kind of helping developers have a better experience around maintaining uh, container best practices, right, or kind of achieving container best practices, because we felt that you know aside from uh, that being just difficult to figure out what the best practices were in the first place. It was a lot of the tooling. Uh, we thought we could, you know, kind of with the foundation of Docker Slim, uh, create a better uh, experience around some of the tooling uh, around container best practices. And so, as you see in the limited availability uh, release that we did, one of the main things there is kind of fundamentally know what's inside your images, know what's inside your containers. Like if you're going to bring something in from the public or if you're working with uh images that are provided to you by you know, your teams fundamentally like having really really good tools that help you understand what's actually happening there uh with a lot of visibility or transparency um is we thought was was something that we could provide really quickly and would help a lot of developers um and that's what we do that's what we've delivered and that's what we're continuing to iterate on it but um we're uh that's what we've been focused on for you know something to give to, out to the community as a you know free to developers for to use you know to to help them and i think that that was one stage um from there we really were looking at uh obviously tying into some of the stuff uh some of the kind of amazing things that docker slim as an open source project has provided for the community in terms of minification right so on our roadmap back then was very much you know this is a year ago let's say um on the roadmap was very much like let's create this visibility tooling uh, let's extend that to, uh, you know, into the minification space and, and start making sure that we're that DNA, that Docker Slim DNA is, is integral and, and integrated into the product. Um, 
And I think that uh, some other pieces that we were kind of looking at uh, alongside that were maintainer, you know, kind of some ideas around some maintainer experiences uh, for open source folks and for internal maintainers as well. So the DevOps teams and, and whatnot um, around uh, shareability of uh, containers and images and, and just, a, you know, kind of better tooling around that. Uh, and we've got some interesting things in play uh, for the future along those lines. And let's see what else was on. Let me just double check real quick because I've got it right here. <laughs> um, uh, and then developer experience, right? You know, you know right. early on it was like this kind of, what is the developer experience of, of using Sling, right? Uh, and baked into our name and into our, to the kind of DNA of the business is this idea of, of something being slim and, and you know, uh, call it lightweight um, or easy to use really. Um, mm -hmm. There's something with like low friction uh, for developers and, and, and whatnot. And I, I think that's obviously an uh, ever evolving process to make things better and easier and whatnot. But um, a lot of what we were talking about early on was like, okay, so how do we make this easy? Um, right. How do we make this whole platform something that feels natural, it integrates into the tooling that you're already using, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so that's the key point is it's not providing new tools. It's providing tools that improve the tooling that you already have yeah i think you know i mean i think there's some new you know there's obviously we always like to think that we have some really new stuff but um the or we have some new things you know kind of in our back pocket uh you know so hopefully happily surprise folks with. but the uh but fundamentally like i don't want to break you know part of a good developer experience is not breaking everyone's existing developer experience that's right you know um that's not a great that's not that's a that's a tough battle to fight and and i think that uh, what we want to do is just make folks uh, better at their jobs, you know, so they're not worrying about a lot of these things that they're currently having to worry about. Right, right. So you've talked a little bit about there about the origins and we, it, even today we're true to that original mission. Yeah. Um, and you talked about, you know, minification is sort of the key thing that um, Docker Slim does. But of yeah. course, that isn't something that we ha currently have in the slim ai developer platform at the moment because we've taken sort of a couple of detours so um earlier in the week we had our friends from payment works join us and yeah. present their case study and i know like that's been a huge focus for us is sort of um uh, helping them become successful in their mission so you can talk a bit about you know what it is we've enabled for them to do in in our yeah. platform yeah, so let's, I mean, this this starts getting into the you know we talk about the roadmap and and the future uh, releases. Uh, so uh, maybe I'll start real quick with uh, what we have available in the current current early access. Uh, okay. I think you probably talked about it quite a bit on the on the stream, but you know visibility tooling, uh, the diffing of images and versions, the um, uh, and a lot of you know kind of call it like profiling uh, of images and containers. So. That was the, the the starting point, and we still have more to do there. But it's but we think it's really exciting, and there's a lot of great tools the team has, has developed, and we've gotten a lot of really great feedback from early access users and 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 whatnot. Alongside that work, we've also, uh, as you mentioned, worked been working with design partners, and one of the main focuses for us on the product side with design partners is to make sure that we are uh, not just building things that we think might be interesting, but actually building things that are solving real uh, real problems for developers, and in this case, developers at, at uh, you know mid-sized startups who are uh, facing kind of legitimate, real challenges um, with you know kind of moving into uh, using containers and, and all of that. And so, on the payment works use case, obviously they were interested in, in minification uh, conceptually, but they weren't quite ready at, uh, when we talk, started talking to them for. Uh, called this kind of some of the day two challenge, solving some of the day two challenges, like, you know, optimizing images. Mm -hmm. um, for them, a big piece of the puzzle was, okay, so how do we, how do we create an experience where our existing team that are not uh, container experts, not all container experts, right? How do we create an existing workflow that allows them to transition to leveraging uh, containers without breaking their current flow, right? We don't right. want to, uh, disrupt the roadmap too much with this work. We want to make sure our developers are, are very productive because we have deadlines and awesome features to deliver for our customers. You know, kind of very standard set of, of uh, asks. And so uh, a couple things that we worked on them with that uh, are going to be in the product, I think, fairly soon. 
Um, uh, one of them, uh, let's you know, we can just talk about. So one is a slim, uh, a slim CLI, right? So mm -hmm. a web experience is not the is not the end all be all of a developer experience. We all know it, it can be right. great for, for some things, visualizations and reporting and things of that nature, um, and onboarding folks to new tools and, and whatnot. But it is not the primary interface any developer wants to use on a daily basis. So right. uh, we've been working with closely with the Paymworks team on developing uh, a CLI. Uh, alongside of that is obviously an API or the our set of APIs, which we've uh, had since the very beginning, but it's really great to work with the team uh, consuming and, and using those to iterate and, and design uh, our APIs as well. So those are two really kind of uh, uh, fundamental new interfaces that we will we'll, we'll be looking to release uh, fairly soon. Right. Um, most of, oh, sorry, I was here. I'm like, dude, I can keep going. No, so, no, no, yeah, you're fine. You're yeah, fine. I'm, 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 uh, I'm holding on to thoughts. I'll, I'll, yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. get back. You. you carry on. So the, the, I think the most exciting part, and I think that uh, a piece that's in the uh, mentioned in the case study with Paintworks is the uh, is our work on collections and, and, and connectors. These two uh, are other areas of the product. So I'll start with the the kind of one interesting piece: connectors, or what we call our integrations, are, are kind of um, uh, like integrations right now with with different registries, uh, public and private, and uh, public authenticated registries. So to help you. Uh, organize all the sources of all where you're getting all of your images. And I, that, that's a, something that feeds then directly, I think, into the most exciting, some of the most exciting feature sets that we have, which are collections. And this is something that Paintworks is using quite a bit right now. We will be looking to release fairly soon, but collections uh, start off initially as just a simple, what you see in the product right now, which is a simple kind of favorites list of mm -hmm. you know, images, which is was really just meant for developers to kind of pick the stuff from, from the public uh, you know, from the public internet and say, these are the ones I really want to like and reuse. Yeah. Well, we've extended that keep those capabilities into allowing developers to create multiple collections of images that represent uh, basically deployments or, or sets of app sets of services that they would deploy together. Yeah. Um, and that's something that Paymworks is using. And we're doing a lot of really interesting stuff there in terms of um, what it means to make sure that developers are always using the right versions of an image, um, pinning digests and and whatnot and a lot of automated workflow right there including an integration with jenkins so that it can be part of the uh, kind of the the slim platform can be part of the cicd process um, yeah so, so there's there's a lot there's a lot of really important things there that i think are worth going back and just sort of spelling out what that yeah, what that see. means so collections uh is a way, way to define your sort of applications logical whole you know the the maybe the web app front end, the database services that it, it sits behind, and maybe the microservices that it relies on as well. And Absolutely. those can be grouped together in a collection. But then uh, what's really powerful, I think, and what I'm looking for, forward to being able to share more widely than with, just with the payment works team is, is then sort of this sort of GitOps workflow that yeah. integrates with that. So you can use very familiar sort of, you know, tagging mechanisms and then um, the slim developer platform will create sort of a semantically versioned docker compose manifest that represents that collection of containers that are intended to be deployed you know together to represent a thing yeah i it, yeah i mean you put it really well i'm so um you know we're pretty deep in this and sometimes i, I use the, <laughs> the elevator pitch uh, i'll work on it i um yeah, so what's interesting, I think, with, with this case is that we talk go back to like container best practices and, and whatnot. And one of the one of the key things here is, you know, uh, deploy uh, by digest, right? You want to know what's specifically exactly what's an image. No surprises ultimately when you deploy it. And uh, a lot of the tooling today uh, puts some of the pressure. Um, you know, there are ways to do it, but there's some of the pressures put on developers to make sure they're doing the right thing and, mm -hmm. and whatnot. And we felt that like there's there's one thing going back you know to the payment use case is like not how not to disrupt their developers and their workflows um, was to look at um, what can we do to automate some of this to make sure that the, the best practices are maintained while right. their team can keep working the way they they normally work right and so what we've added to collections is the ability to basically uh, track versions of each uh, image that are they're kind of built and used uh, in the process and pin. 
uh, different versions, so different by digest, so that you can, uh, what's the best, what's a really good example? So Martin uh, ships some code, build process kicks off, it generates a new image. That image is uh, best utilized with a handful of other services uh, that uh, work together with it. Maybe there's, you know, for local development, maybe there's a database and, you know, or whatever. Um, we can then uh, say, well, another member of the team, Josh, let's say hypothetically, uh, is also doing the same thing. Well, I can go back and, and with the system of collections, go back and, and almost uh, replay or, or kind of generate, regenerate uh, the exact uh, build that Martin made, all right, uh, based yeah. off that one on that commit and say, this is Martin, this is the one that Martin was using, and this is one, this is one that Josh deployed. Um, and I think that that and then report that back, you know, through some of our visit with some of our visibility tooling, report that back to, uh, in this case, GitHub and say, you know, hey, that that commit generated this build with these artifacts. And this is very specific. And um, PaymentWorks really likes that from a not just a record keeping standpoint, but from uh, the standpoint of helping uh, reduce friction and troubleshooting. And, and right. And, and so. Yeah, you know, that. if you know it was version 100 of that, you know, manifest or revision 100 of that manifest that is somehow broken, it's mm -hmm. very easy for the developers to now recreate that environment in their local development environments and yeah. know precisely that what they're looking at is that thing that is in production that is causing that exact problem. thing yeah yeah that exact thing and i think that there's you know other parts there that are we think are really interesting uh, kind of moving forward which is um being able to kind of record and catalog um what exactly we've we've shipped you know uh on a per environment basis right to right. ultimately to production right like what was it on uh, october 15th that we put into production, right? Um, yeah. At uh, eleven twenty-four Pacific time. Right? <laughs> and um, I think something that we've we we throw the term around quite a lot internally, and we talk we talk about container best practices. And I know that you know, having worked as a developer, and I still have my hand in a number of projects. When you hear best practices as a developer, you immediately think, "What, what, what is being put upon me this time?" And yeah. you, you immediately get your heckles up and start to think, "Okay, what is the extra stuff I'm now responsible for today that I wasn't responsible for yesterday?" But I think one of the things that we've demonstrated through this is that container best practices actually, if if it's done well using tooling we can provide developer best practices don't add additional time and drag to the sort of the velocity of the dev teams it can actually significantly help them go faster because it doesn't mm -hmm. you don't need to de burden these teams with additional process with better tooling they don't need any additional process but then they get a load of upside and benefit as we were just describing about being able to access precisely a set of tagged assets that are you know being put into production and they need to debug yeah i mean um it's a great point so you know was, uh, we all you know we say and i'm sure we're not the only ones i think there's tons of people who say the same thing it's like shift left just you know it's just means that developers are doing more work right like yeah you start off as a uh you know, a specific type of developer, and all of a sudden you're managing infrastructure. Like two weeks later, and you're like, "What? What happened? Wait, why am I, why am I doing this?" Right? Um, I think that, uh, and if it, you know, a lot of folks, we can joke because you know, folks feel that pain, and it's mm -hmm. everyone knows what's up. Um, but the real, the real thing here is automation. Is uh, automating this stuff is, is, you know, I think the answer to a lot of this. Like, why are we, why are we doing this work when um, a lot of this can be done by the computers, right? Uh, right by, and so that's you know we may not be perfect yet in that space i mean it's a there are a lot of hard challenges to solve but we want to keep that like kind of eye on the prize which is i always ask ourselves you know does a developer really um need or want to do this and mm. it doesn't mean removing like magically removing capabilities this is something that uh or you know removing uh uh dials and knobs from from developers it's it's more about when you trust the tools um the tools can do it for you Right. And, uh, and, and I think that that's something we always keep an eye on. 
Yeah, and it, it, it's not even uh, just a simple matter of uh, sort of avoid uh, uh, removing the tedious tasks from developers and giving it to the computers to do. The other thing is, is that, you know, uh, those businesses that are uh, employing developers, they want them to get the maximum value out of their time and energy, and that's better spent on them creating new products and services rather than you know doing the job of a, that a computer could do. <laughs> well, you know, yeah, like so, like this is funny because I put on my 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 product my product my evil product guy hat, you know, for a second, and. Uh, you know, yeah, like we want to, uh, we want to deliver to our customers, right? Um, you know, to our users, to our customers, to the folks who uh, we're trying to create value for. That's that's mm -hmm. our thing now. Um, and we're under pressure often to do that at you know uh, at velocity, right? At the same time, you know, like in, in everything, no one wants to diminish quality. But the crazy, part, you know, the crazy thing about the world today is that um, we're having to cover a lot more ground when it comes to what the definition of quality is than right. than you were before, right? Um, it's not just bug-free software. It's it's now we're in many cases we're accountable uh, to you know kind of provide more information and, and or cover more uh, uh, challenges with security and, and whatnot. We're you know that that kind of definition of quality is the scope is increased uh, mm -hmm. significantly, right? And uh, but yet we're you know. Uh, the tooling, you know, in many cases, there's a lot of work being done across across all of the kind of cloud native space to create better tooling. But um, we're still in the early stages of making sure that all this stuff is usable and, and integrated. And I think that um, that's, you know, a place that we want to play. And we want to make sure that uh, where we play is is um, uh, in the area of like making sure that like whether it's existing tools or tools that we provide that we can integrate into your workflows and, and relieve some of that pressure um, right, that you have right. on, quali on the quality side. So we've got a few people in our Twitch chat. If you've got any questions Everybody. for us based on the conversation that we've been having, feel free to ask. But um, I suppose to wrap up, what, what are the features that are coming soon, TM, that you're most excited <laughs> for? So I love it. Yeah, uh, I was gonna. I was debating whether or not I would just jump in here and start putting dates on things uh, without talking to the, the team. I, uh, as you know, we you know we've been here at the conference and and uh, spent a lot of time at the booth and talking to a lot of developers and uh, and uh, hearing a lot of really good you know like kind of amazing uh, talks uh, about kind of the future. Um, so maybe I'll give you the the quick and dirty uh, what we're looking at for the immediate future. So uh, immediate future, we are working on uh kind of updating some user experience stuff on the web portal around the visibility or we call it the profiling tooling uh, or the visibility tooling uh, on images just to make that a bit more consumable um so that's kind of the like that's like in progress alongside of that a really 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 top priority for us is delivering on a great developer experience for minification uh in the mm -hmm. cloud so while you can do it with docker slim and docker slims and, and you know developers are doing it every day and it's it's uh kind of uh, an amazing tool we want to make sure that we can build fulfill that promise in our in our cloud product and so that's i think i mean to be honest i i would say 78 percent of the team is dedicated to creating a great experience around that right now um alongside those like you like said with the with our design partners uh, kind of in parallel we've been working with a select number of, of uh, businesses to make sure that we're solving real challenges uh, for them uh, like payment, uh, like payment works. So out of the payment works, uh, case study and design partnership, we'll, we're looking to release, uh, like we mentioned earlier, that those, a lot of those collections features we were talking about, um, and the command, the, the CLI and uh, a number of those pieces. And, uh, we have a few things in the works with other design partners that I think will be coming, uh, pretty soon after that. Um, so that's, that's actually quite a bit for us. Uh, mm. minification though, I would say like that's coming soon, um, or relatively soon. It's, it's a lot of work. Uh, the developer experience is something we want to nail. Um, mm -hmm. so we're going to be iterating on it a bit and we'd love, uh, as we start to expose this stuff, we'd love to get more feedback from, 
from the community and from uh, for sure from yeah i mean peter and i w will be very quick to uh show everyone how how, how to take advantage of those tools so eric yeah. has joined us in the chat uh eric goes by our podcast because of his involvement oh, yeah. in the r community uh, yeah. and he says he's particularly interested in future integrations and the metrics details obtained from examining containers with x-ray so oh yeah for those and um, that are not in the know what is x-ray and and what you know what can you you learn from x-ray well right now a lot <laughs> um so uh oh so you know actually um i don't know if this is this will answer Eric's question what i i like we love eric and i i want to make sure that we get um we we're able to answer kind of or, or solve some of his specific challenges and i'd love to uh, maybe talk to him later about some of the specific things he's looking for. But I, it did remind me, I'm sorry to spend, avoid this. I'm not avoiding the question. Um, one thing that we're working on, uh, Martin, the hackathon. I don't know if you've even, if you've ever talked about the, our internal hackathon. On, on uh, we have mentioned that there was one, uh, yeah. but unfortunately I was on holiday that week. <laughs> oh, you were, yeah, you, you were, you were. You failed to contribute, my friend. Yeah, um, I didn't get, I, I so, didn't get to participate. <laughs> just very disappointing. Um, but, uh, no, no, we had a lot of fun. And the thing is what, uh, one of the things that came out of the hackathon was, uh, some tooling for maintainers, or we think, uh, some stuff that could help, uh, maintainers of open source projects and actually potentially even internal maintainers, um, around, uh, kind of exposing more of the, uh, uh, details and, and insights, uh, that are in their images. So, uh, we have a, a really cool thing. I think, uh, I'm not entirely sure how close it is to being uh it's definitely demoable and, and super show offable but it's i'm not quite sure how close it is to being production ready or ga ready um that's that's gonna help us surface insights about images uh or help our uh, maintainer friends surface information about their images like in their uh repos and registries so call it um i don't know i want to like totally reveal everything but like really badass badging um with a lot of details and insights and uh based off of x-ray and some additional stuff we're working on in the x-ray space so, yeah so it's um, kind of like um uh, a quantitative quality metric uh that, that encompasses a whole raft of you know attributes from from what we can learn from introspecting the yeah. container and, and things the things that like you know uh being at the conference and and talking to developers and honestly stuff we've gotten uh we've heard a lot for a long time that you know uh, folks are really security conscious so what things that we're thinking about are how do we you know think about um vulnerability detection and, and partnerships with with great the kind of amazing tooling that's out there today helping mm -hmm. folks do that um how do we look at uh you know kind of quantifying um you know uh like giving a really uh, at a glance view of kind of you know is this does this uh, image is this image something i want to use uh and is it or are there things that about it that i, I may need to take a second look at and, and so, fun stuff i think that i actually am really excited i, I almost forgot about it uh, <laughs> i'm actually really excited by it because i think that um the it's something that we can do for the you know for the community and for maintainers um to help uh you know, maybe reduce some of the burden on writing uh, like giant descriptions for their for how right. to use it and in their images and stuff, and and help them you know kind of communicate uh, the kind of level of effort that they've put into creating quality uh, yeah quality images, right? It, absolutely, yeah. I mean, I think projects like uh, like Linux Server IO, they already do a fantastic job of you know lacing their um, their project profiles with lots of good information and yeah. i think this yeah. is a, a way to so, sort of help augment and automate some of that to you know make an objective uh claim on the quality of the images that you're publishing yeah and it, you know the thing is right like um you know folks can there are a lot of amazing teams out there in the, in the world doing uh putting like to have dedicated, you know, maintainers are spending a lot of time doing a lot of work, and I. But there's also a lot of folks out there doing amazing work that that also have full time jobs in other spaces and and aren't uh, able to kind of put everything they can into you know managing those projects. It's really really challenging. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm like, hey, what can you know? We have this great tooling. Um, discovering the right images to use is really important to our users. 
uh, how do we help folks? What can we do to help folks, you know, kind of uh, relieve some of that burden of, of being a maintainer a little bit? I, I'm just really excited by that because I think it's, it's going to be really fun. <laughs> well, thank you very much for joining me, Josh. We don't have any other questions at the moment, but that doesn't no. matter. If you're watching this after the fact and you think, oh, I've got a great question, then above my head is our URL. Uh, from there, you can join our Discord uh, live chat or our discourse community, so short form and long form, and you can ask your questions there, and we will be more than happy to get back to you. Um, uh, uh, no, Eric goes no, on to it. say, okay. the, that's the story. Be self Sorry. Be self yeah. Like, anyone, uh, check out the, our early access. If you want to give feedback on, on what we're delivering, check out our early access uh uh, jump in. Yeah, there you go. Sorry, I got to do the podcast. <laughs> Check it out because we're listening. We're paying attention and we really, 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 really want your feedback because we don't want yes. to create things that are not useful for everybody. So. so you visit Slim AI, as you can see there, and at the top, limited seats available. You can join the early access program. And for example, if you really want to see what changed between revisions of your containers the tooling that exists there right now to do um re really really nice technicolor exploration of your container images and also diffing of your container images right the way down to diffing the files within those container images so not what got added removed or changed but actually being able to visualize the individual file changes as well so all of that's available now including hooking up multiple uh, registries and what have you so there's some great tools already there um, you're free to come and uh, hook your images up and have a play and as Josh says we, we love to hear what people make of all of this stuff oh Martin sorry one more thing um, x-ray upload for Eric uh, the other thing that we did um, is uh, you can export from docker slim uh, your uh, full x-ray and actually upload it uh, into the portal to get the kind of the the one thing that the web does fairly well, right? Which is really great visualizations uh, uh, and whatnot. So um, that's another really interesting tool that we provide and we'd love feedback from our dark crystal users on, on, you know, kind of what they're seeing there. Yeah, um, Big Pod here is saying that he'd like to see more container registry connectors. Yeah, I'm sure we'll, we'll get to more of those in due course for sure. <laughs> what was that, Josh? I said, me too. Um, yeah. And, uh, and the folks here, but uh, yeah, we're working on it. We're actually working on a few. Um, Big Pod, I'd love to know which one specifically you're interested in. GitHub is what he would like to see. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Right, well, thank you very much, everyone, for stopping by. It's lovely to see you. Um, we will be, but what oh, is it today? It's Friday. It's been a bit of a blur this week. So um, we will be back next week. Uh, we will definitely have one of our regularly scheduled uh slim devops lives on thursday next week but also uh he's here in the chat with us but uh big pod and i did some work on uh, uh packaging up one of git pods um services which is their uh open uh visual studio code sort of live web coding environment and we're going to be following up on that and uh, with the git pod team so that's something we'll be doing on an ad hoc basis next week sometime among other things so that's it well thanks very much josh for joining me we'll put a bow on it there enjoy the rest of kubecon will do thank you very much check me out at the booth if anyone's in la yeah which what's our booth number do you remember uh su5 i believe su5 uh, so there you go if you're at the event stop by and and see josh and uh peter and kyle in person yeah bye for now yeah. see you soon